whatever a fossil free future looks like, it's clear it's going to involve a lot of batteries. But there's no point in solving one problem just to create another. And so we've got to ask some pretty serious questions about what happens to a battery once you can't use it as a battery anymore. Can it be properly recycled? Why does that seem to be so hard to do? In this episode, we're going to visit a German recycling plant, Dusenfeld, who are making some real progress in this area. And we're going to dig down into these questions about what the future of battery recycling looks like and how soon that future is going to arrive. Welcome to Fully Charged. Our goal is uh, basically to separate the metals and the graphite from each other and um, to bring them into battery chemicals which can be used again into a battery uh, cathode material production. And your facility here is specifically set up for lithium-ion batteries? It's only for lithium-ion batteries, yes. And so, so where, where do your batteries come from, the ones that you're processing? From um, car manufacturers, OEMs and um, also from battery manufacturers. Why is, why is recycling a battery hard? Recycling of batteries is um, an interesting task because um, there are different hazards, like for example, the battery can ignite, and there is a flame of liquid in the battery, and uh, there's energy stored in the battery, the battery carries energy, that's uh, the task of a battery, so this um, can um, yeah, start reactions like uh, fire or something like that and we have to prevent um, these things to happen when we recycle batteries. We are basically doing things with batteries we are not supposed to do uh, with an <laughs> ordinary lithium-ion battery, so um, we need to uh, take some measures. Batteries, they are dangerous. There are different kinds of dangers. There's uh, uh, electric danger, there's uh, chemical danger and they can be, if they start to burn off, uh, of course, uh, burning danger. But that's what, what the machine is for. This is our discharge station. We need to discharge the incoming batteries to make them safe um, in doing our process. So the handling is more uh, safer and we can um, go on with our process after discharging them to zero volts. And we have four discharge stations here with a total power of 50 kilowatts. The energy from the batteries is fed back into the grid and so we can reuse the energy in our recycling process. All in all, we are able to um, recycle um, the complete first step just with the energy from the batteries. Um, so that's brilliant. So they're, they're carrying energy as they come yeah. in and they're using, you use that energy to exactly. take them apart. What is in here that makes it dangerous? There are both solids and liquids, right? Yes, um, the battery consists of different um, electrodes, um, anodes and cathodes. And um, so these are coated foils, an aluminum foil coated with a uh, nickel, uh, lithium, nickel, cobalt, manganese and graphite um, compound and uh, a copper foil which is the anode um, which is coated with graphite and in between is a separator and that is soaked in the liquid in the uh, electrolyte which is uh, responsible for the ion conductivity so that the lithium ions can uh, travel from the uh, one electrode to the other electrodes to make the battery work. So we've got a lot of different metals and then we've got a conducting liquid which means it's easily set on fire that's also flammable. Yes. So we've got all the hazards yeah. in one place. So the battery comes to you and basically in something like this it's, that's all just folded up so it's yes. a bit flat. Yes. So it's all good. So you've got loads, so it's like a really really thin layer cake with lots and lots and lots of layers and then there's this liquid and then this arrives to you. And um, what, what do you do with that here? What's your approach? At first we, at first we um, try to um, yeah, reduce the energy in the battery by discharging the battery. We use that energy to run the process partly. Um, and after the discharging process we are uh, shredding the battery under nitrogen so that there's no um, 
um, possibility to ignite, to have a fire. And directly after that, um, we uh, mix the uh, crushed parts in a vacuum mixer and evaporate the electrolyte at a very low temperature so that there's no um, HF formation, um, no fluorine components would react with the rest of the batteries. That's why we take a very low temperature approach and um, then we can recondense the electrolyte. We can regain the, ele the electrolyte and have, on the other hand, a dry mixture of battery materials, which can be separated afterwards. You know what strikes me about this is that it, it's almost, a lot of the time, it's more fun to take things apart than it is to put them together. And it strikes me the guys who have this job just get to take things apart all day. Uh, satisfying thing yeah. to do, yeah. You need an interest for this technical stuff. All my, um, all my electricians are interested in uh, EVs and all this tech, new technology. And so for them, it's fun. <laughs> How hard is it to take this apart? Is it, is it a lot of... Uh, old systems, is, uh, it's very hard, it's complicated. They're um, mostly designed, um, the battery containers are for gasoline cars yeah. that are switched to electric. So the, the modules are uh, twisted funny and shapes. funny shapes, yes. Um, and the modern cars gets be better. It gets better. Yeah. What happens to all the pieces? So you're taking off bits of plastic and bits of metal. Um, what happens to those? Uh, they get recycled too. Um, obviously, there's a lot of electricity. So there's a lot of copper, copper um, signal cables, um, power cables. That's a lot of copper and we want it. The cases are often... So it's uh, really valuable. Even yeah, the case around yeah, the battery yeah, is yes, really yes, valuable. Yes, yes. And is it difficult because you have all these different battery types? It looks like everything is different. Are you, are you always having to learn yes, how yes. do we do this one? Yes, yes. We have uh, always two people in the line who have the experience, who know which which boat, which bo boat is where and uh, when I have, in, uh, which, in which order I have to remove it. The thing that gets me about the setup downstairs is that so few people are doing this. You're the only ones who have a process like this, and yet you've made it look so simple. <laughs> it made, you've made it look easy. <laughs> Was it easy to build? Is, how easy um, is this? The problems with the details. It's. Um, so the base machines, like shredders, they, they exist for a very long time and vacuum drying is done in other areas, but it's nowadays you, you don't invent the wheel, you, you adapt and the batteries are very difficult in many ways. They're not easy on the chemical side with the, um, with the electrolyte and they're also um, not easy um, as for, for the classic handling. Those things together make it difficult because suddenly you have difficult, aggressive good and you want to vacuum dry it. And, and then, then you get um, to the limits of the standard products or sometimes beyond. And you need to think about uh, your sealants also from the chemical side with the batteries. And, that's what makes it more difficult. It's not right. off the shelf standard. There's a really important point here then, which is that you're, the process you use, so you take things apart mechanically um, and you separate them using mechanical processes, mm. which is magnets and you know, density and buoyancy and all those sorts of things. What you don't do is just heat it up and mm. melt it. Yes, that, and that's, that's the more traditional event. approach. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, there are two approaches. One is uh, kind of melting, smelting the whole battery yeah. in order to uh, regain uh, copper, cobalt and nickel, which are but only about 25% of the battery. The other way is to um, pre-incinerate the battery in order to get rid of the electrolyte um, and um, also a uh, little of the graphite partly. Um, but then you cannot, cannot regain the electrolyte and the graphite, which is um, together, yeah, maybe 40% of the battery. So, so if, you want to, if you want to really recycle, because the aim, the ideal aim, at least in my head, is that you could recycle 100% of a battery and you can only do that if you don't destroy it and incinerate it yes. before you start the recycling process. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so, um, we are the only company who can regain the electrolyte and um, 
um, we are also the only company who can uh, who doesn't thermally harm the graphite before the recycling process. And that's why um, afterwards we can regain the graphite as a graphite in its graphitic right. structure um, by, um, in the hydrometallurgical process. Cobalt. Now we get the colourful ones, <laughs> the colourful things yes. that people remember from chemistry at school. Yes, um. that's cobalt, it's red. Cobalt, so it's co cobalt sulphate. Uh, as you may have heard, cobalt is a critical mat material. It has a very um, uh, high CO2 footprint, but if you recycle it, it is better. It has a very low CO2 footprint, right. so we can really save um, five tons of um, CO2 by recycling one ton of lithium ion batteries. Right. Um, Next up, so this is nickel, nickel sulfate. That is nickel sulfate, yes. And this can go, so this, this is used in the production of a battery. So, so the idea is that you, you take those, you can using the hydrometallurgical processes, you can turn them back into this, and this goes back into a battery. Yes. So it's all possible. It is possible yes, that these, yes, the yes. atoms just go round. Yes, 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 sure, sure, sure. So uh, in the future, when um, we would have a kind of saturated market, um, there won't be a need to have a, um, lots of uh, more raw material um, yeah, mining or something like that. You can really um, use the materials you have already mined. Right. So, um, as uh, the re recycling rate of this battery is uh, around, um, possibly around 91 percent. So that's in your in your facility now. You can. 91 uh, percent is with graphite um, recycling. Um, right now we at 70 percent. Right. Without graphite recycling. And the last because one here. That is manganese. manganese. Yes. Yeah. Humanity has had batteries for 100 years and for almost all of that time the batteries have just been thrown away and yet we recycle glass bottles and cans and all sorts of other things. Why, why is it so hard to recycle a battery? What makes a battery different? Why, why, isn't this, why aren't all batteries being recycled today? Um, there are some parts which are more difficult to recycle in lithium-ion battery. As we talked about before, it can be dangerous, um, it uh, can ignite and so on. So um, the easiest way is to just to, um, yeah, ignite it in a um, or incinerate it in a uh, atmosphere or in an oven which you can control, and then maybe separate the materials or smelt it directly. But we thought um, with the growing electric mobility, growing demand of energy storage devices, also from renewable energies and so on. Um, there will be more lithium-ion batteries, and then it, yeah, the economies of scale makes it, it possible to have more sophisticated processes to have which have a ri higher recycling uh, re uh, um, efficiency. So I've just had a chat to um, some of the guys working here and this is great. So what we can see here is batteries from an electric vehicle and you can tell coming in that this one was an adapted vehicle right behind me because it's not a single flat shape. You can see the battery has been put in around structures that were designed for a petrol car. So you can actually see the kind of car it's come from. <laughs> Taking it apart, trying to work out how to take it apart. And then behind me here there are the flat much simpler batteries that come from cars that have been designed to be all electric. So you can see even here, um, the, you know, they're, they're taking in batteries from all kinds of different sources, from adapted cars and from newly designed ones. And how about the energy used during this process? So it uses less than conventional techniques that would smelt metals and throw a huge amount of heat energy in, but how much energy does it take to run the battery from one car, for example, through this machine? Yeah. It's actually not a lot. Even just, uh, we do the discharging of the batteries at first. And with the energy um, regained from discharging the batteries, mm -hmm. it can easily make up for half of the energy consumption, what we have here. Right. So it's... Wow. Uh, so they're, they're coming just, in with enough energy. Back the energy out of the batteries can, can already um, significantly lower the, the power of the machine. So we are um, talking about uh, yeah, very little numbers compared to heat process. 
it's brilliant. It's so it's it's clever and simple, and I like it. And the thing that makes me optimistic is that it seems that it is the sort of thing that you you can imagine. It's not so complicated you couldn't build it in lots of places, and that means that you could yeah. recycle batteries on a much larger scale than we do now. Let's say the battery already exists and your machines down there make separated bags of stuff. What chemistry do you need in order to turn that back into raw material that can be used again? What we do simplified is um, we bring the metals into a solution mm -hmm. with an acid mm -hmm. and then we have special technologies to separate the individual metals from each other in a liquid phase. Mm -hmm. And the last step is we bring it back into a solid phase, so we crystallize basically salts, which is cobalt sulfate, nickel sulfate, lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide. Yeah. And these chemicals need to be of very high purity and then they can go back into battery production. So you're taking, because the thing that is, the ma thing that makes this difficult is that you've got all these different um, alloys in here and compounds. So the, the atoms are right next to each other. They've got their right, one atom is next to a different atom, which is next to a different atom, and they're right in a solid. And it sounds like what you're saying is that if you, if you let it dissolve into an acid, then all those different atoms move apart. Is that the point of the process? Yeah, it's so it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, difficult to separate in some cases because the elements have uh, quite similar chemical properties that make this different. It's the case with cobalt and nickel. Mm -hmm. And another difficulty is why we have to develop new processes is this mixture, mixture of elements is not typical in nature, right. neither in um, other scrap materials. Yeah. So the established processes are not designed to separate this mixture of metals. So it's almost like humanity here has created a new ore in yeah. a way. We've got a new yeah. material that has atoms can say it's a new type of mineral if you right. want an artificial mineral yeah. with a new combination of elements and we are not used to separate these uh, combination of elements so that is why we have or well, we need new development the other reason is um, we have some elements in this black mass which make some problems like fluorine mm -hmm. from the conducting salt and can produce hydrofluoric acid so it's a right. certain risk in processing and what we have done is uh, that we have designed a process which separates the fluorine in the first reaction step. Right. And then the other steps are much safer and easier to handle because there's no risk of the formation of hydrofluoric acid. Is there any reason why you couldn't recycle all of a battery? Just in the big picture, from a chemistry point of view, would it be possible to make a battery that is 100% recyclable? Oh, that's very difficult <laughs> with this. <laughs> um, it's also economic trade-off, of course, right. but you have highly specialized materials. I think it's relatively easy to recycle metals, yeah. but you also have plastics with uh, specially designed surfaces right. and um, you have a lot of trace elements to improve certain certain um, properties of the material and there are certain limitations also from a thermodynamic point of view. Right. So you, are, you always have certain losses. So for metals, yes, in general, at least you can uh, achieve very high recycling rates. Yeah. For plastics, it's always a problem. How soon is it going to be that you can buy an electric car and be confident that the battery will eventually go into a process like this? You can already be confident at the moment because we recycle batteries, other companies recycle batteries. It's already taking place. At the moment we have a very small return flow from end-of-life batteries. Mm -hmm. and what we will see over the next years is an increasing return flow from production scrap in Europe because at the moment a lot of new factories are ramping up battery production. So that's right. We have then the battery scrap from production and then at the end of the 2020s we will see much more return flow also from end of life vehicles and this will increase dramatically in the 2030s. 
recycling can play an important role in uh, reducing the CO2 footprint because mining has to be only has to be done only once with this material and if it can be recycled uh, with a recycling efficiency of almost 100 percent. So um, recycling is very very important to reduce the CO2 footprint of the battery and the CO2 footprint of the battery is one of the most important things I guess um, for the emissions of the future car. I'm really impressed with the setup here because they've really thought about things like energy efficiency and usability. They're using the minimum energy flow through and getting the maximum number of usable atoms out at the end of it. And it sounds as though there's a base of something really big here, that if you buy a new car today, the battery from it will be recycled by the time it comes to the end of its life in 10 or 20 years time. There's still loads of details to work out when it comes to scaling this up, but I'm feeling really optimistic. Batteries can be recycled, and that is a huge, and really important point for the future. So thank you to all our Patreon supporters. If you'd like to join them and supporting us on Patreon, you can have a look at the link in the description. And if you have been, thank you for watching.